So when a patient of non-trauma, like Dr. Rinaldo had touched upon in the morning, when a patient comes to the ER, we are more concerned about the history as to what has happened, how it happened, what is the diagnosis and all those. But when it's a trauma patient, the approach is slightly different and it is more practical. First is the primary survey with the vital signs, followed by adjuncts to the primary survey. We are going to talk about what are the details of these terms which I'm using, followed by a quick ample history. What is ample? It stands for allergies, medications, what is the past medical history of this patient, the last meal and uh, the event which led to what the patient has presented to you with and followed by a detailed head to toe examination which we call a secondary survey and then followed by an adjunct to secondary survey and other investigations. So primary survey uh, A, B, C, D, E but what does it stand for? A is for airway and why is this sequence so? Because what kills a patient first has to be tackled first. So what can kill a patient within minutes is if there is an airway obstruction or uh, you know anything which has uh, difficulty to do with uh, the airway, the breathing it takes about half an hour to maybe a few hours. Circulation would rather kill the patient in the next couple of hours or maybe another eight hours, 10 hours. Disability may take a day or two and followed by uh, hypothermia or pain management, which also needs to be taken care of. The, this collar which we are talking about, so I think in the session since morning we'll be talking about cervical collar, but that's not the soft cervical collar which is usually prescribed to patients with neck sprain, is the hard cervical collar or the Philadelphia collar which we call it. It has to be appropriate as per size and when you go on to the stations we'll show you exactly how do we measure what is the appropriate size for a patient. So airway is with a cervical spine stability with a Philadelphia collar. Breathing is with ventilation. Circulation is with bleeding control or hemorrhagic control because you do not want to give blood on one side and not stop the bleeder on the other end. So it's with bleeding control. Disability includes your GCS and pupils and the HGT which could also be contributing to low GCS of the patient. Exposure and temperature uh, to look for any obvious deformities, obvious fractures uh, which could be present. It's this video I quit. Hi, my name is Michelle. I'm doing a video on C-spine transfer precautions. So this we will be covering on stations as well. So we can, uh, I mean, we'll show you and so that you can practice as well. What are the adjuncts to the primary survey? Is your arterial blood gas and ECG? X-ray of the chest and pelvis with both hip and a quick E-fast. What is E-fast? What is fast? Focused. Yes, so focused assessment uh, sonography in trauma and followed by urinary and gastric catheter. To be uh, careful that if there is any blood noted at the meatus, you will not go ahead with any urinary catheterization. And your ample history, of course, you need to know the mechanism, how the injury has happened, followed by the ample, which we've spoken about. Secondary survey is a detailed head to toe examination to rule out any other injuries, which were not really important for life saving in the first 10 minutes of assessing the patient. So you would uh, check for any scalp lacerations, bleeders, contusions, any evidence of skull fractures or any crepitus, which is felt in eyes for conjunctival hemorrhage, any penetrating globe injuries or any contact lenses, ocular entrapment. For ENT, you would look for any blood in the ear canal, any maxillofacial injuries, any contusion to the mastoid, uh, nasal bleeding and things like that to rule out any base of skull fractures. What are these signs which we see here? Is this significant? Why? All these signs, are these significant? Could they be life-threatening? Yes, so these are all. So this is a battle sign, raccoon eyes, uh, which are suggestive of a base of skull fracture. And why is this important is it could signify that, you know, patient may have a injury to the base of skull. Yes, so when you're putting in a Riles tube, for these patients, you cannot put in uh, a rice tube through the nose because you may land up in the brain. So this is more for people who are dealing with trauma every day. Uh, CSF rhinorrhea, CSF otorrhea, uh, no, uh, this is how a normal tympanum looks like and then hemotympanum. So all these are signs that there is a significant sc uh, skull injury. 
for cervical spine you are dealing with patients with head oro maxillofacial trauma and they are presumed to have head injury as we saw in the first case this morning where they had only given a history that this is a high speed motor vehicle accident and patient had some facial injury okay so that was the third case which dr rinaldo had shown so whenever there is any facial injuries or above the chest any injury you should always have a low suspicion for or uh, sorry a high suspicion for cervical spine injuries and we need to do a x ray or a ct scan to rule out any cervical spine injury or if the patient is very stable we need to do the canadian c spine rule or the nexus criteria to be sure that you are we are not missing out on any cervical spine injuries in your examination you would have inspection palpation auscultation to rule out uh, the injuries in the particular system that you are examining for chest examination again inspection palpation to look for unequal chest rise any distended veins in the neck uh, which could be suggestive of a tension pneumothorax or a massive hemothorax or a cardiac tamponade or paradoxical breathing which means flail chest what's a flail chest flail chest anyone i mean we can be wrong there is no point but we'll have a learning out of it multiple rib fractures at two or more points so only at if they are in a single line that will not cause a flail chest but they have to be two on multiple ribs so that will lead to a paradoxical breathing okay so when a patient inspires so this flail segment goes in and when a patient is expiration then it goes up so, so which is paradoxical to the normal movement of the chest percussion to look for any hyper resonating sounds a dull sound would suggest of hemothorax and hyper resonating would suggest of a pneumothorax on auscultation we would find either an absent breath sound which could be pneumo or hemo both but then the percussion would help us differentiate any murmurs uh, while auscultating the heart sounds would suggest any pericardial tamponade uh, or cardiac injury muffle heart sounds cardiac tamponade uh these are the contusions which you see either around the navel or on the flanks which could be suggestive of pancreatic injuries uh and the patient would have a cullen sign or a gray turner sign uh which again suggests that there is intraperitoneal or intraabdominal hemorrhage for pelvic examinations of course we have to with when we are doing the hemorrhage control and if it's a high speed motor vehicle accident we need to put in a uh pelvic binder how many of us have seen a pelvic binder or have a pelvic binder in our hospitals or departments and what is an alternative any idea a bed, a bed sheet yes which has to be snugly fit and we make sure that there is no pelvic movement uh there is a saying that blood on the floor or four more in atls so what are those four significant other places where you can bleed the whole volume of the body so either the patient is bleeding on the floor which is obviously seen and then there are these uh, four more places where the patient can have a lot of blood loss and which could be hidden where can these be pelvis, pelvis very good that's why your pelvic stabilization or pelvic binder is important what's next abdomen very good thorax or chest yes and fourth femur yes on the thigh so these are the four places where you can have massive blood loss and it could still not be obviously spilling on the floor very good so musculoskeletal examination for of course your contusions deformities if you note this comes much later in atls it's not in the primary survey but in secondary and that too much later so musculoskeletal examination is incomplete without back examination that's why we're going to demonstrate how to do a log roll of a patient and what is the right way of doing log roll so that you don't do not uh, twist or turn the cervical spine neurological examination this is a detailed a detailed neurological examination to rule out any spinal injuries compressions or uh, deficits in motor sensory uh, so that's your detailed neuro examination secondary survey which we've gone through uh, what are the priorities in this patient adjuncts to secondary survey is your other tests or like a ct scan of the spine ct scan of the brain which you would do to rule out the injuries which you are suspecting in your secondary survey so ct scan of head chest abdomen a contrast urography or angiography bronchoscopy esophagoscopy which all come later on as an adjunct finally where would this patient land up so if he has any 
significant head injuries or intracranial bleeds, the neurosurgeon gets involved, uh, CVTS or general surgeon, depending on where the injuries are, and orthopedicians, of course, for any uh, fractures. And the disposition, they land up in OT if they are unstable. If they are stable, then you would get to a proper diagnosis and then they go to the OT. So the pearls of uh, assessment in ATLS, recurrent evaluation is important because a trauma patient, the condition is dynamic. He could be stable on arrival, but maybe after the next half an hour or one hour, because he's continuously bleeding, he may become unstable. So recurrent evaluation is important. You need to do the ABG vital parameters, ETCO2 monitoring, tetanus toxoid uh, or tetanus immunoglobulin, depending on the past vaccination history, a broad spectrum antibiotic, IV analgesia, all of these have to be a medical legal case. You need to take consent for procedures, collect the forensic evidences as may be applicable, and do not shift the patient to CT if he is unstable. Then they go straight to the OR. Music